Thank you very much. May I now request Mr. S. K. Pathak, Secretary General Fiki, to welcome and present the green certificate to the Honorable Prime Minister of Bhutan, along with Dr. Josta Suri and Mr. Deepak Deva. Invite uh, Mr. Pathak, Secretary General Fiki, to deliver the welcome remarks, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Devya Sajuno, it's our proud privilege to welcome all of you to welcome the Honorable uh, Prime Minister of Bhutan, Dashot Sering Thopke. Um, I'm sure that all of you have listened to his speeches on YouTube. And all of us are looking forward to your address today, uh, Honorable Prime Minister. I, uh, since this uh, event is focused on high-end tourism, I wanted to show something to you. This is a very, very proud souvenir that I have from Tak Sang, the Tiger Nest Monastery in Bhutan. One of the most uh, unforgettable experiences. Um, thank you, Honorable Prime Minister, our uh, past president, Dr. Jyotsna Suri, who is the mentor of the Tourism and Culture Committee, uh, Mr. Deepak Deva, chair of the uh, uh, committee, and our friend, uh, Ambassador General Namgel, and another friend, Mr. Sudhakar Dalila, who is held up by traffic, he'll be joining us in a moment. And dignitaries, uh, ministers, and uh, uh, secretaries uh, from the government of Bhutan uh, are on honored guests. We extend a warm welcome uh, to the Prime Minister of Bhutan and the delegation on India-Bhutan tourism and expanding horizons. And may I share that just before coming here, the past president and the chair of the committee have already agreed to put up tourism facilities uh, in Bhutan. So a round of applause for that. We feel very proud. Mrs. Dalila, the Ambassador of India in Bhutan, please join us on the dais. He was our, he was our very gracious host when the FIKI team, the delegation was in Bhutan last October. So thank you again. India and Bhutan share a long-standing relationship on trust and collaboration. And I am an infrastructure person, so I remember the Tala Hydropower uh, project, which is a great success and a collaboration between Bhutan and India. Trade and development assistance. Uh, India is the largest trading partner of Bhutan. And we feel particularly proud of our uh, neighbor who, who is the leader in the world on gross national happiness. Today's deliberations are going to be about tourism. Um, we were there in, in 26, 27 October last year with our pres uh, uh, president at that time, Mr. Shudrakan Panda, as well as our uh, senior vice president, Mr. Harsh Agarwal. We had the uh, privilege of an audience with His Majesty the King. And uh, uh, it was really wonderful meeting all of you uh, uh, secretaries. Uh. Today, we want to end our discussions by 7 p.m. because Honorable Prime Minister has to leave. But before 7 p.m., I just hope that all the high-end tourism operators from India see the opportunity of making a lot of business turnover and cash flow. And on behalf of FIKI, we represent businesses. What we really want is for our businesses to double their turnover and cash flow in the next five years. So with that, thank you once again, all of you for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary General, Mr. Pathak. May I invite Mr. Deepak Deva to deliver his remarks and conduct the session, please.
good evening your excellency topke honorable prime minister of bhutan your excellencies industry colleagues and friends from the press it gives me great pleasure to participate in the india bhutan summit on tourism our countries have shared such a such strong ties over the past few centuries that encompass culture and familial ties our rich cultural heritage breathtaking landscapes have led to a deeply abiding and mutual respect and admiration for our people this summit serves as a unique platform to build on this shared history so that we are not only enhance we not only enhance tourism numbers but also foster greater understanding and collaboration between our two great nations while tourism between our countries has been has seen steady growth over the past 3 years it's time we focus on what we need to grow it exponentially we briefly touched upon that over a cup of tea when the prime minister arrived we need and we need to increase air liquidity between the two countries prime minister this will help us meet our growth objectives in the near term while offices based in bhutan are able to process visas for our guests currently we urge you to look at either allowing visas on arrival or an online visa process as that would make it far easier for people to travel to your beautiful country india in 2016 changed inbound tourism to india changed purely by one decision e visas while i've touched upon uh, two of the tactical issues we also need to focus on i i'd also like to raise a few strategic issues if bhutan allows fdi foreign direct invest in the investment in the tourism sector it would ensure that we have a large team of specialists on the ground that would be trained to deliver a seamless high quality experience to our customers who are traveling through india and bhutan sri lanka is a good example you don't have to give 100% fdi they give 40% fdi and they have seen the results immediately people are committed companies are committed to the growth of tourism in those areas so it's a very important factor in our view i would also recommend that countries in the region bhutan nepal sri lanka and india combine their beautiful tourism assets and promote them as a region which will help bring in a large share of the world tourism market and help our economies go grow both in terms of investment and employment finally i hope that the india tourism uh, uh, india uh, bhutan tourism summit will pave the way for a mutually beneficial partnership in tourism by focusing on sustainable development cultural exchange and economic growth our nations can look forward to a future where tourism acts as a bridge that not only brings people together but also contributes to the preservation of our unique nature and cultural treasures i am delighted to be part of this initiative and should and that should help us realize the full potential of tourism as a force for good fostering greater understanding and cooperation between india and bhutan thank you very much i would now thank you i would now request the prime minister to give his address Thank you Mr Deepak Deva uh, for your lovely introduction Thank you SG Mr Patak for all the hard work you've done you should be sitting right in the middle where I am because I understand you put this together and you worked for us to be able to meet your colleagues in Mumbai as well So thank you, and you've already offered to help us in Guwahati too. You're an amazing man. You really need to be in the middle. Uh, <laughs> Madam Jyotsna Suri, such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Sudhakar, my friend. Just beat traffic. In fact, we're so happy to have him here. Uh, 
ladies and gentlemen, captains of the Indian industry, particularly tourism, thank you so very much for joining us today. I met Prime Minister Modi yesterday and I was looking forward to visiting India after our recent elections and calling on my friend, a person I regard as my older brother, Prime Minister Modi, and I was overcome with emotion. And many hours later, I was still overcome with emotion, and I know it was because of my meeting with Prime Minister Modi. But I also realized that in large part it was because I'm back in Delhi among friends and this visit and this visit has been so very emotional for me as indeed I'm sure with my colleagues I have the Minister of Foreign Affairs with us the Minister of Energy with us Energy and Natural Resources Natural Resources because he's the one person in charge of taking care of our forests and, in, and our environment. We have the Minister for Industry and Commerce. He's in charge of the tourism sector, the Secretary of Energy, the Secretary of Foreign, Affa uh, Foreign Affairs, the Secretary of Finance, and then a few of my colleagues, and most importantly, the Ambassador of Bhutan to Delhi, the Ambassador of Bhutan to India. So, during my first visit to Delhi, I wanted to meet you. During my first visit itself, I wanted to meet the captains of industry in India. And more importantly, the drivers of tourism in India. I want to meet you because I want to invite you to Bhutan. Now, how many of you have visited Bhutan? A show of hands. Oh, wow! My job is that much easier. If you visited Bhutan, my new friend Mr. Patak showed you a picture of Taksang, tiger's nest. If you have visited Bhutan, you know more than anybody else why. Not only why you should visit again and bring your family and friends, but why you should bring your clients to Bhutan. We've been blessed with excellent relations with India. Our kings are the foundations of this relationship. This is why we would like to have more <coughs> Indians visit Bhutan. Yes, we would like to have other nationalities visit Bhutan as well. But India is in our immediate neighborhood. And as such, we would like to share what we have with visitors from India. We want to be your host. Our kings have implemented their vision of development for Bhutan, what we call gross national happiness. The overarching objective of gross national happiness is to improve the happiness and well-being of our people to improve the happiness and well-being of our people by balancing economic growth, which is, which is essential, balancing economic growth with social progress, cultural preservation, environmental preservation, and good governance. And now why is this important? Why is this relevant for our discussions today? We need social progress, and we have made good progress there through free education and free health care. What this means is your tourists will have hosts who have been well educated and who can communicate and take care of your clients. The preservation of culture obviously is extremely important to our discussions today because we in Bhutan are the custodians of a unique culture a culture that we can share with the world, a culture that we can share with your tourists. 
Preservation of the environment is extremely important as we are a carbon negative country. A good 72% of our country is under forest cover. This is what tourists love to see. This is what tourists enjoy. And good governance, the fourth pillar of gross national happiness, is relevant because tourists are guaranteed the security and safety through the rule of law in Bhutan. We, are, we also are a democratic country. And finally, economic prosperity. Our people cannot be happy unless our economy is prosperous. And while we are making tremendous strides in social progress and cultural preservation and environmental protection and good governance, in the area of economic progress we have been extra cautious, we have been extra conservative. This caution and conservativeness has meant that the COVID pandemic has hit our economy hard. And to bring it back full circle, this is where you can help. To your tourists, you'd be able to spread economic growth throughout the people and throughout the country. This is why I am so excited, of, excited about meeting you and through you, welcoming tourists from all over India to Bhutan. The overarching purpose, I repeat, of gross national happiness is to enhance the happiness and well-being of Bhutanese, of the citizen. The overarching purpose of our tourism policy must be to enhance the happiness and well-being through the journey of tourism in Bhutan. This is what I want to share with you. I am fortunate because during my first visit to Delhi I get to meet you and I, am, I have so many ideas already. Mr. Patak has given me a certificate that somewhere in Sikkim you planted 25 trees on behalf of our delegation. I can monitor the trees online. I want to make a counter offer. How many of us are here today, Mr. Padak? 50? 100? Let's plant 100 trees then, in Bhutan. And we will allow you to monitor those 100 trees online. Mr. Deepak, Deva, I can understand why you all are so successful here. He gets up here to introduce me, but in, in effect he gives me four recommendations. Air liquidity, he says, we need to enhance access by air to Bhutan. That's my responsibility. Consider it done. Visas, visas, visas on arrival, online visas, both consider it done simply because it's already available. We have failed to let you know that it's available. But my job is going to be to make visa on arrival easier and online visa applications also easier. Remember, it's been developed by bureaucrats, not private sector folks. So we will work to get both the existing visa on arrival and the online visa system as user-friendly as possible, as India-friendly as possible. <laughs> Mr. Deva has suggested that we develop packages, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, India, done, 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 done. But done means we have to do it together. I'm not a businessman. We don't have two operators with me this time. Next time, perhaps, you will have to help me. You will have to help them. Let's build packages, cultural packages, spiritual packages environmental packages, adventure packages, 
very few places on earth boast this diversity in geography, in environment, in culture, in spirituality, in such a small place. So let's build packages. FDI on the tourism sector, in the tourism sector, again, done. <laughs> done because it is already impossible. In fact, right in front of you, I was in conversation with Madam Suri, and she has agreed to visit Bhutan next month in April to look to scout for a location to build her next wellness resort, Lalit, in Bhutan. <laughs> Incidentally, she remembers her visit to Bhutan very well, and she says she. She was scared. Madam Suri was scared. She had a heart in her mouth while flying into the airport in Bhutan, in Paro. Many of you would have fly, flown there, right? And she says, we must do something about it. I said, did you land? She said, yes. She said, but with my heart to my mouth. Madam Suri, I would not change a thing. Because you remember Bhutan because of that. And you are going to visit us again. You are going to visit me again next month. So it must have been a pleasant memory. But jokes aside, this is the most adventurous airport in the world. Most scenic, most unique, but I dare say the most safest also. Our track record speaks for itself. We have not had a single incident in this airport. And we will keep it that way. We'll, we have much to talk about. I will have, I will need your support as we move forward to share Bhutan with India. Because India, you share India with the Bhutanese. As close as we are friends, India and Bhutan, as close as we are at the leadership level, and by leadership I mean India's leadership with Bhutan's king. As much development cooperation we do together, as much as we may cooperate at international affairs, ultimately it's people to people, friendship, partnership that matters. From Bhutan, a small country, we have tens of thousands of pilgrims visiting India every year. We have thousands of patients seeking medical services here. And we have many thousands of youth studying in India, training in India, working in India. We'd like to invite you to Bhutan. We'd like to invite, through you, we'd like to invite your clients, your tourists, to visit Bhutan to experience cross-national happiness, to experience friendship. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Prime Minister, for such an encouraging speech. Uh, I wish uh, every time we could hear done, 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 in, 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 even in our environment, <laughs> I'm sure it will, this is great, uh, this is a great step forward for India and Bhutan tourism. Before I move ahead to the Q&A, I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, the presence of some of the industry leaders here in tourism who are, who play not only a role in, in generating business to India, but also a role in generating business to Bhutan and have, uh, some, you know, have really been in, in, uh, in the forefront of tourism growth to India. There are three of my co-chairs of FIKI. May I introduce Sanjoy Roy, uh, who is the responsible for culture. Sanjoy is also the founder of Jaipur Lit Festival, as you would have heard, Lit is your festival. And uh, anything culture that we need to discuss, he's our, he's our go-to person. Uh, San, uh, Santosh, uh, who heads Booking.com in India, is also our head of, uh, also responsible for sustainability. Uh, and um, the uh, we have Ankush Mahajan who looks after outbound 
he runs uh, he runs a very very oh sorry ankush excuse me ankush nejavan at uh, he runs a very successful company called tvo um, and uh, they are the leaders in in the online space in travel and he heads our outbound uh, part we also have some presidents of associations here uh, india has a lot of associations and lots of presidents who play a very vital role in bringing uh, tourism from different parts and the growth of tourism out of india uh, jyoti mayal from uh, the travel agents association of india uh, then we have the next one is uh, is guldeep saini he is uh, ex outbound but has done a lot of work for the outbound space in india we acknowledge that uh we have ajit bajaj who uh, who is responsible for the adventure uh part of uh, adventure association we have riyaz munshi uh, from the outbound oh i'm sorry riyaz sorry you're there um uh, uh amrish uh, tiwari who hand looks at of the icpv which is the incentive and the conference promotion board um rajan a avid golfer so he decided to form an association <laughs> he runs the golf association and uh, has done remarkable work for promotion of golf in india and uh, so with that i uh, i'd like to, i just wanted to acknowledge my colleagues here and to introduce them to you prime minister we now uh, open the floor to q and a as we know the prime minister has uh, very little time uh, we have half an hour uh, we have q and a and i'd like you all to please a state your name uh, and ask the question uh, uh, and i'll i'll moderate then and see which please go ahead Yes, the gentleman at the back. Hi, sir. I'm Siddhant from Vion. Uh, my question to you is: uh, India and Bhutan are looking towards railway connectivity. There are plans to connect to Assam. Uh, what's the plan like? How this railway connectivity will boost uh, tourism and also connectivity between the two countries? Railway connectivity is going to be well. India and Bhutan are connected intimately. we have a open land border we are connected by road we are connected by air and obviously we are connected digitally the next connection is going to happen through railways so the government of india has agreed to help connect bhutan by railway on two different paths this is going to help bring passengers but more importantly trade into bhutan and exports from bhutan into india gentlemen there my name is amrit pal singh i'm from uh, dd india doordarshan that's the public broadcast of india so in your meeting with prime minister modi uh, did the boundary question uh, the bhutan china boundary talks figure in the talks yesterday yesterday we focused on the india bhutan boundary and how friendly we are and uh I also reported to Prime Minister Modi my intention to meet you to encourage you to send more Bhutanese, more Indian tourists to Bhutan. Uh, thank you. May I just request that in today's forum, being a tourism forum, uh, we keep the questions to growth of tourism between the two countries. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll ask the lady first, then I'll come to you. Sorry. Please. Good evening, Honorable Prime Minister. So while we are all very happy that you are. Uh, saying done, 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 too many things. There's one thing you know. You have to understand that uh, from India, if you want tourism to get into Bhutan, there are two deterrents. Uh, number one is the cost. It's an expensive destination. I absolutely love that you have something like a carbon offset uh, and a green fee, but that green fee is too high. Nobody talks about it. It was, I think, around two hundred dollars. uh that was the sdf sustainable development fee that bhutan was charging so imagine per night whatever is your hotel cost adding a 200 dollars to it i think you have half it now it's around 100 dollars if i'm not mistaken sir so uh while i understand that we are looking at more tourists this fee is going to be a deterrent uh i am absolutely okay in paying an extra for a a green tax or whatever but i think uh, if you are expecting an exponential growth in tourism you will have to look at that field and i don't want it to be taken away but it has to be relooked at thank, thank you, you sir how much would you be willing to pay it's it's not about me sir i paid i have paid uh, uh, 65 when it was 65 before covid 
and I would pay the full 200 for you. But what happens is we have to think from the perspective of our customers as well. Give me a number. What, what do you want to pay everybody? Consensus? Uh, I think a 50 think or a 65 dollars which was initial, that should stay. So for Indians it is 1,200 rupees. Okay. So that comes to 15 dollars. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Done. Okay. That Done. Done. <laughs> now you can make it 1500. Done. No, 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 we're not going to increase it. We, we need, no, we're not making it 1500. Huh? <laughs> Don't uh, mislead. Yeah. So I think that, that, is, that is a good initiative. Yeah. So it's, it's already 1200. This is why I was... Yeah, but sorry. then this information should be... Uh, it I is, don't know. It yeah, is available. No, no, it is available in the public domain. Yeah. Uh, there was a change. It ha there was. It was recast, and now it's <coughs> available. The Indian fees for Indians is very, very low. Okay. And That's only right. for Indians, but yeah. 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 only for Indians. For the rest of the world, it's two hundred. For the rest of the world, I literally mean the rest of the world. Yeah. It's a hundred dollars okay. per night. Thank which, you. which prime minister is not a problem at all. For the rest of the not world. for me. No, and not for the rest. And not for the rest of the world. Is one thousand two hundred. May I ask? His Excellency, welcome to India. Your visit is very important to us because your coming here actually opens the door for tourism, and we are looking forward to the exchange of tourism from Bhutan and India to Bhutan. Uh, I have two things. One, Tanuja took away, and I want to thank you for the uh, the fee that you have for India. Uh, uh, I was about to interrupt her, but then I said, uh, <laughs> you, it's a, something for you, you answered it so well, I really appreciate that. Thank you for that. Uh, second is my invitation to you. I would request that if you can have a delegation of tour operators and hoteliers and adventure sports tourism operators in Bhutan to come to India, Fiki will be a very good platform to in, uh, you know, bring in all the tour operator associations and other tourism associations together and we can have a good session in, in, in Delhi, Mumbai and maybe other places in India. That's my invitation to you and thank you once again for being here. Thank you. Can I, can I, can I say done? <laughs> can I say done? Okay, done. I have your permission, right, to say done. I'm, I'm really, okay. yeah, Excellency. Uh, for the MICE, the meetings, incentive, conference and exhibitions, which is a major 3.5 ah. times the higher contribute to the tourism industry. So when the flight come from the Bhutan, you can see at the airport every day we had a minus booking because the connectivity, as the already said, is a matter of low. So we have a more Indian cities, the connectivity. We have a flight which operate more flight because of MICE you need a more seats to you know, the operate because every time we find this thing the minus uh, bookings there in the Bhutan so business is good but we wanted to increase more and you know so need a more connectivity so, so, more cities, sir. so before I say done <laughs> yeah, the question is should you generate the interest first or should we fly the routes first air liquidity should we go to the destination first without knowing whether we're going to get tourists or not or should you mobilize tourism first? Sir, this pull factor yeah. and push factor is always a controversy. Sir. Yes, so yes. let's negotiate now. <laughs> what would you like? Sir, you come halfway, yes. we will go halfway yes. and we will meet in the middle. Sir, at least whatever the cities we are operating, if we increase the frequency, are allowed more airlines like the Vestara, Air India, give them the space to operate the flight as well, sir. Done. I think the problem is... Yeah. Done. You know okay. why? Because we have an air service agreement with India. Just as we fly to India, Indian airlines are allowed to fly to Bhutan. So done. And for mice, we don't pay the sustainable development fee. Absolutely, sir. Yeah. 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 So you know that, right? Yes. And you're holding important information without sharing it ah. with the rest. <laughs> Yeah, he, no, was, uh, he's a good negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask Santosh uh, from Booking yeah, sure. to ask the question and uh, Sanjoy next, you're next and then yeah, sure. Prime Minister Tobge, thank, thank you for making the trip, it's a pleasure. Um, you know, for us at Booking.com, we believe our company's mission is to make travel easier for everyone to experience across the world. And one of our key focus areas is sustainability. That aligns beautifully with your nation's 
you know, general outlook towards life and tourism as well. Um, and, you know, my question or my suggestion as well is in the area of sustainability, but also around accommodation in general, right? Because when we look at tourism in, in Bhutan, majority of it is driven today by the offline sector coming in into Bhutan. And we are in the business of generating demand, source markets across the world, India included, into Bhutan. Um, and we see that there is a lot of opportunity, but today a lot of your accommodations are not necessarily selling, let's say, in the online space. Um, and what we do is um, we are able to bring about more education um, through conducting workshops, um, learning workshops and um, you know opportunities for accommodation providers, homestay operators. We have done that in many states in India. We are happy to offer the same to the government of Bhutan as well, if that is an area of interest uh, for you all um, in terms of expanding the, the knowledge within your accommodation operators today in the country uh, to be able to attract travelers coming in from different channels um, increasing the awareness, um, you know, uh, improving the customer service experience. Because the Indian traveler, what we have found is, to the point that was being made before, Indian travelers want to travel sustainably. Um, whether they will pay more is a question of choice. They will pay more if they see the value, without a doubt. Uh, and I have a copy of our How India Travels report. I'd be glad to pass that over to you later. That was one of the key aspects that we covered in terms of sustainability. I'd love to see your report. And I have a suggestion. Next month, Madam Suri is visiting us. Would you be able to take on someone else with you? Yeah, I, I, in fact, I'm going to uh, extend the invitation to everyone in this room. Give me the thing. Yeah, I will decide. <laughs> <laughs> how many How many? How many others see? can you take? <laughs> no, we'll take, a fl uh, we'll take a plain load. Yeah, how, many, how many do you want? <laughs> I love the way he negotiates with this. He always throws the ball into your court okay. and then stumps you with that. But uh, you know what? I think it's a great idea if we are able to go there and also plant those hundred trees. That's something I would like to do, for sure. Mm. For sure. You just made my work that much easier. I was going to plant them. No, but we want you, to plant them. We plant want them to plant better. them. We want to be there with you uh, and we want to plant them uh, 100 trees in Bhutan very quickly in the year 2024. Next month. Next month. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm still, so, um, still negotiating. Next, month. Next, next month. month. next month. Next month. In the month of April. Uh, yeah, month of April and I'm extending this invitation to all of you who would love to come with me. I'm sure you would all love to come with me. Yes? Yes, done. So, done. 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 <laughs> I, had to, I had to borrow done. his word. So, done. <laughs> so, so the question is, we have an answer to your question, right? Next month. Next month sounds next good. Next month, yeah. With or without Madam Suri, next month. Yes. Yeah. Oh, with sounds Madam Suri, good. with Madam Suri. What we will do is get all our hoteliers together. You can meet with them, talk to them about going online, and we will facilitate the discussions. You want Bhutanese hotels come to come online? I want them to come online. Consider it done. Thank you, Prime Minister. I'll, thank you, Prime Minister. I'd like to now move to Sanjoy. I, yeah, I'm coming to you. Listen, I can ask one person at a time. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Prime Minister, to India, and I hope uh, you're going to keep coming back. Uh, two suggestions and one offer. As you all know, as we all know, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Damgyal is really your brand ambassador to India. Our suggestion, yes, absolutely. My suggestion is that with our colleagues in Fiki, if Bhutan considers to do a festival of Bhutan in different cities in India, much of what you're saying in terms of communicating some of the key policy issues that many of us in the room are not aware, that could be the platform. Because trying to get this kind of information out into the public, as we know, is more and more difficult because media is so fractured. So that's the first what suggestion. What is it? A 
What do you call it? A, a festival of Bhutan, but in different cities in okay. in India. So I was thinking of a road show. Road show. No, no, no. Well, I, 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 sounds much more refined. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't say a road no, show road because show you know there are many of those. The road show is too yeah. prosaic. I think okay. it has yeah. to be a festival. And do it. Some, do something that's immersive that people understand Bhutan, everything that you spoke about in terms of the environment and the happiness coalition. So that's number one. So for that, we have to ask our ambassador if he was going to say it down. Uh, he and I have often spoken about this, but... Well, the uh, ambassador has to follow the leader of his prime minister. <laughs> so so they're, they're, they're lobbing the ball off at each other's court. <laughs> when, when, when? So we'll, we'll, let, let me finish the other suggestion and okay. then we'll come to that. Uh, as you know, uh, Prime Minister, uh, Her Excellency, the Queen, now the Queen Mother and the Queen, uh, has often come to the Jaipal Richa Festival and you all now host a, a festival in Bhutan. Festivals are great ways to be able to platform the country as well as give an opportunity for an immersive experience to anybody visiting. Uh, my suggestion to you is that while you have a festival of literature, you call it the Bhutan Festival of Literature. Perhaps it could be the Thimpu Festival of Literature, like we do the Jaipur Literature Festival, or we do Sacred Amritsar, or whatever. The minute you add the name of the place, uh, it's much more, it's easier to brand. And I think you need some branding effort there. The offer really is to expand that, and I'll speak to Dr. Suri about this. You know, we do a whole host of mind, body, soul festivals, whether it's in Florida or in other parts of the world. Maybe we should look at doing something like that with you in Bhutan. We're happy to speak to Karissa, who we worked with in the past, uh, at Suneva Fushi, where we used to do a JLF. So we can look at something like that. And with the European Union and the United Nations, who are our partners, maybe do an environmental festival in Bhutan, which again focuses attention on much of what you've talked about in terms of policy. So thank you. And, and thank you again, I think, on behalf of everybody for being so proactive in everything that you offered. So, Bhutan Festival in India, uh, Excellency Ambassador has already declared that. India Festival Maybe. in Bhutan, I would say, India's Ambassador to Bhutan, we should encourage him to say that. Well, not so much an India festival because that's, I think, under the ambassador's no, no. remit. Sorry, really, a mind, sorry, body, sorry. soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mind, body, soul. And that would be beyond just India. We should look at the world, look at how the world can discover Bhutan through the mind, body, soul festival. I remember a time when Her Majesty came to JLF Boulder, Colorado, and we had a number of Rinpoches. I am Great way to, to introduce. I'm trying to delegate. <laughs> let me. Let let us. Let's. Get our Leave it to a done, yes. So you have a focal point, see? And then on the festival of different cities, festival of Bhutan to different cities, you think you can do it this year? An immersive festival in different cities? I think, I think, yeah. I mean, you know, India can turn around stuff very, very easily and, you know, I know. Picky and we can work very closely together. It can be a picky initiative, Secretary General. It can yeah. be a fiki initiative, yeah. but we can do it together. Uh, he has to say that. Done. So, so, I got this from the Indian ambassador. You know what that means? It means done. And this is very important because we have requested the government of India for support, to support a st stimulating our economy, uh, an economic stimulus plan. And proceeds of that, part of the proceeds will go to helping our tour operators organize this immersive experience in different cities in, Bhutan, uh, in India. Okay. And we are happy to help in terms of policy yeah. in any way developing this. Thank you. Uh, uh, Jyoti, the next, your next word please. We have only now uh, another 11 minutes, so please keep your question brief. And, uh, and uh, let's not repeat anything that's been asked today, which you want, I know. No, not at all. Uh, welcome, Excellency. And I think firstly, I must congratulate you for taking the chair and the leadership in Bhutan, because I think it's just a recent one. And the way I see you as a visionary, I'm sure it's going to be doing much better 
and the moment you land in india we talk about tourism which is very close to our heart and our prime minister's heart too so i think that really needs an applaud from the everyone for you i think you like to applaud him i think it's great so i'll quickly come to the question that is i continue with the immersive uh, thing that i'm not going to repeat it but tourism is all about people to people connect and that's what we talk about and bhutan is known to be a happy country you know that's what we say let's spread happiness i think that's how we should be doing it we should be connecting people to the countries of each others each other countries and also build this immersive with culture and craft so that we can move forward with stories of what the new experiences are because today the demographic of a traveler and the destinations are changing very quickly and also i see that your focus is more on the value than the volume which says it very loudly so we would like you to emphasize on that that if you are interested only on the value side how do we take the value forward because we are not interested in volumes like you say it very loudly because we need to create that sustainability edge so i think we need to work together to mm. promote that and bring happiness to each other countries or say the extension of happiness to each other's country in the right format by emerge, emerging in all these demographics thank that's you. what what i think thank you so the first uh you mentioned how do you uh add, about value yeah, how do you bring value how do you protect that value not just in numbers i would just say experience happiness tourists who visit bhutan guests to bhutan feel different and you feel different wherever you go but in bhutan you feel different if that difference whatever it may be because of the air the sun the people the smiles the children the glint in their eyes the food the service the culture the difference the monasteries spirituality whatever it is if you if that experience you feel is one of happiness that's what we have to celebrate The question is not so much how do you expand on it <laughs> the question should be how do you first and foremost preserve it and we preserve it by controlling numbers so this is strange because i want to promote numbers yet at the same time we need to ensure that our numbers do not go out of hand we need to control it yes. i agree we, with you we need to keep a few for the media yes yeah. we are going sure. there uh, and at the back Yeah, so that will be a wonderful tagline to go when we promote Bhutan. So that should be the best tagline to be added on yeah. when we are promoting Bhutan <coughs> as a country. Thanks, Jyoti. Thank now you move, so much. I now move no. to the media. I think you are waiting uh, here. Namaste. Then I am coming and, uh, at the, to the media there and then uh, to you, Shanti. Did I pronounce that right, Tashik Velik? Velik. Very good. So thank you so much. I am Mohit Sardana, founder of uh, Asli Ayurveda, a proud Indian startup. committed to bless ancient wisdom of ayurveda with modern wellness practices offering transformative solutions uh, for holistic well being uh, i am here to make a proposition to set up a ayurvedic spa retreat in the heart of uh, bhutan and should add a leaflet in this tourist guide we should mention not just one century but plethora of centuries of is, is there a question you have yes, for the prime minister we are very short of time yeah So, how do you take uh, Ayurveda and Yoga okay. if we right. integrate that with your uh, tourism policies? Thank you. We are starting a wellness center, and that fits right in. Yeah. Right in. Right on. So, thank you. Okay. okay. Gentlemen, sure. the lady there who's been waiting in the black jacket from the press. Are you from the press, right? Yes. Yeah, please. Two. I'll give two to the press, and then come to you, Shanti. Yeah. Uh, I'm Forum Gandhi. I work with Hindu Business Line. Uh, I wanted to ask you how many tourists did we get from India uh, the previous year? How many are we targeting for this year? And uh, what percentage of uh, pre-COVID are we at at this point of time? How much? How many did we get last year? I have no idea. How many Indian tourists? Uh, So I, I, I can answer that. Yeah. I have the numbers. So on behalf of the Prime Minister, I have got the numbers here. The number of Indian tourists in 2023 was 72,659. Tourists from other countries were 30,407, making it a total of 103,066. Uh, to answer your question, pre-COVID, the total number of tourists were 315,599 to Bhutan. And Second. how many are we expecting in the coming year? In this uh, in 2024? Targeting 150,000, 150 from India. Okay. Thank you. Gentlemen, honorable uh, Prime Minister, this is Manas Devi from Economic Times Travel. 
uh, you mentioned about uh, making visa process more accessible or Indian friendly. Uh, going forward, are there any plans to make it visa free like many of the Indian neighboring countries are doing? And uh, during your conversation with the Prime Minister of India, do you had the conversation about making more Bhutanese people also travel to India like a two-way uh, channel? Thank you, Manas. Like I, uh, I mentioned earlier, we have many Bhutanese already traveling to India. Uh, and we'd like to encourage more. First and foremost, we must get our tour operators to travel to India, to the <coughs> cities. <coughs> visas. Indians don't need visas to come yes, into Bhutan. Tra travel permit. You need a travel permit and you need to pay 1,200 rupees per night. So, but you don't need visas. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. So the next question is from Shanti Kohli. She runs a very exclusive destination management company and I thought it would be interesting to have her ask you a question. Uh, yes, Shanti. Actually, only nice things to say and I want to congratulate you and your country for what an incredible destination it is for tourism. I only sell high-end travel to Bhutan. I agree with all the, the policies. Um, it was very nice that, that you brought it down to $100 from 200 That really helped. I like the fact that it's 1,200 rupees per person. That money does go into this incredible environment you have. So all I have to say is congratulations and thank you for okay. incredible destination that you have. Thank you for your validation. I'll ask the gentleman in the blue shirt with the black jacket. Uh, His yeah. Excellency, I am Rajneesh Rathi. I publish uh, Wedding Affair magazine and I represent the wedding segment here. The I wedding was wondering organizer. when you're going to yeah, get a uh, wedding, wedding organizer. <laughs> yes. So, this is my question. Uh, are you uh, trying to make any special effort to get the wedding industry in Bhutan? What are the special efforts you would need? Hmm. Uh, see, one is uh, we, as a wedding industry, you know, we need a uh, large number of rooms because whenever we do a wedding, it cannot be done in a small hotel, uh, not less than maybe say 100 rooms, and plus the venues available. This is one part in terms of uh, the infrastructure, and the second is uh, the uh, clearance of, you know, the ornaments and the spices, the other things which we carry at the time of wedding. So, Ornaments and? Spices. Spices, spices for? for the food. Because normally when we do wedding... You we get organic spices in Bhutan, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but serving uh, 300, 500 people at a time, yeah. you know, you, we need to carry it from India. Yeah. So a special counter in terms of uh, uh, the facilitation for customs and the infrastructure. The, the entire world is now banking on the Indian wedding industry. So I would like to draw your attention this side. Any special effort done towards this side? Let's work on it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let's work on it. Yes, sir. We have had Indian weddings in Bhutan. Uh, we do have some hotels that can take in 100 people, 70 rooms, 80 rooms. We have such hotels. It can be, it will be a very special experience. Bringing in your ornaments should not be a problem, will not be a problem. Spices should not be a problem. Anything else? Uh, no, uh, I would like, you know, a point of contact if, I mean, I can offer my services. So for the expertise of uh, okay. uh, taking Indian weddings to Bhutan. But I would like, you know, if somebody can, uh, you know, be in touch and uh, we can carry it further. You can route it through Fiki. Everybody, everybody's well. contact is Fiki and the Bhutanese embassy. Okay, we will right, share the numbers. Right, sir. Right, sir. Thank you, Prime Minister. The gentleman here has been waiting. And please be brief with your question. We have exactly five minutes left. Ajit, I'm coming to Kuzakula, you. Kuzakula, His Excellency. Uh, my name is Diu Karora. I represent Make My Trip. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving a priority to the tourism, India, Bhutan tourism, right? I just want to give you one good news that, yes, we are operating few charter departures in the coming months, right, for Bhutan, and we are getting very good response from the customers right now. 
I would also like to draw your attention to about few challenges or I can say the difference in pre-COVID and the current scenario in India to Bhutan tourism. Uh, as we know, 2019 was the best year for Bhutan tourism. And now, after tourism, few things which is impacting or challenging as in tour operator. One is the flight cost or the flight availability, which a lot of us have mentioned. Another one, the SDF charges, mandatory guide, even in the smaller vehicles, right? Other thing which we realize that when we talk to the hotel, they are facing a lot of issues in terms of shortage of staff. So just wanted to understand or if you can put some light on those issues. Thank you. Where are your charters coming from? Which cities? Mumbai and Ahmedabad. We need to start regular flights there, it looks like. <laughs> yes, okay. But uh, thank you for... And, and you're getting good response. Yes. Uh, thank I'm you, this is response. really good news. And I will convey that to our airline industry. They should know because of the charters, but I will convey to them that they should seriously consider uh, regular flights, regular commercial flights to these cities. And again, I, I would like to look into how we can support the airlines also through our economic stimulus activities so that they can fly to uh, more cities in India and to subsidize the airfares. So the airfares for Indians has already come down. I don't know if you are aware of that. Yeah, it's already come down. And if it must be made lower, the airline is not going to come down anymore. The government will have to subsidize. And we are going to have a look at what is possible. His Excellency, I have a question waiting for a long time. In terms of your hotels... I'll, I'll manage it, don't worry. I'll come to you. In terms of your hotels, uh, the staff, again, it's chicken and egg. Yeah. We need to have tourists before hotels can really recruit to their uh, required uh, the number of staff as required uh, to pre-COVID levels. Thank you. I'd like to go to the gentleman at the back. Be brief, please. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, this is Abhishek Jha from Sailing News 18. My question is regarding this uh, BBI and uh, motor vehicle uh, connectivity pack. We talked a lot about connectivity. Uh, what is the stance of Bhutan right now on this entire connectivity project and how do you see this project going forward? Right now, there's nothing happening. There's no discussion right now. From Bhutan side? No, there's no discussion at the moment. Okay. I'll ask the gentleman on the left yeah. and be brief, please. Yeah. yeah. I'm Abhishek Sonkar from the Press Trust of India. His Excellency, it is a pleasure to have you here. I wanted to know, like, you are targeting a higher number of tourists uh, in the approaching year to Bhutan from India. Is there any estimated amount, like, you are figuring out the worth of business from India and Bhutan? We are looking at the carrying capacity of Bhutan in terms of numbers. Right now, we believe that it is about 300,000 for the whole year. And of that, we believe that we should target at least 1, 150,000 Indians. So we are not looking at the overall revenue. We are leaving it to market yeah. forces. Fantastic. So out of 300,000, 150% is from mm -hmm. India. Fantastic. Ajit, the next one is yours. And brief, please. Good evening, Honorable Prime Minister. My name is Ajit Bajaj. I'm the president of the Adventure Tour Operators Association of India. Um, so during COVID, uh, Bhutan revived the trans Bhutan Trail, uh, 400 kilometers from Ha to Trashigang, which has already become a global model of sustainable tourism excellence. Now the government of India has come up with two trails, mega trails, the Western Himalayan mega trail and the Ganga Nature and Heritage Trail. So my first uh, question is, what advice would you give us? Because, you know, you've determined carrying capacity, you've taken it to the next level. And second question is, could we look at an Eastern Himalayan mega trail connecting Nepal, India, Bhutan, and again going into Arunachal in India um, as, as a mega adventure trail and also um, a, a great uh, way of fostering uh, regional cooperation between the three countries. Thank you. A pan-Himalaya trail sounds appropriate. I think that is something that the world would uh, feel very excited about, the adventure traveler. What can you learn from Bhutan? Uh, I, I'm afraid I can't answer that question. I don't know. But what you can experience, 
what you can experience in Bhutan, you already know. Uh, go right, go right ahead. Yeah, go. And uh, you know, uh, I think Bhutan has set an example uh, by, for the destination management and for the quality uh, arrivals. So we have already started uh, honeymoon uh, couples to your uh, country uh, to celebrate their anniversaries because I think after a huge wedding in India, which is at the moment Bhutan is not ready, the honeymooners can go, go there and because of your atmosphere, your peace and happiness, their relationship will be, become stronger also. And uh, uh, you know, secondly, uh, I, when you ask somebody, uh, everybody that have you been to Bhutan, I have raised my uh, hand half because I have not been to Bhutan, but His Excellency gave a nice presentation after pandemic, it's called Co uh, Bhutan Calling. And in that presentation, we were almost in Bhutan. And uh, since you believe in quality, uh, I want to promote golf tourism to Bhutan because 20 golfers will give you money then for of equivalent to 50 tourists. Sir. Yes. So this is my request. So golf tourists, including yourself, yes. your main focal point must be ambassador. Yes. You know he's an avid golfer. Yes, I By know. By the way, sir. did you win the Masters? No. Because oh. he hit so long, looking you know, at a jacket. Him. <laughs> he hit so long. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking yeah. at a jacket, it looks like he won the Masters. But <laughs> the, I, I just to attract the attention for golf tourism, I bought. We are golf. <laughs> so golf tourism is possible. Thank you, sir. You want to drive long? Go high altitude. You'll drive further. Yes. You can break your own record. We'll yeah. give you a certificate for <laughs> breaking your own record. Yeah? 450 yards. Great. Pre-wedding. Yes. Not everybody is 